Foxtrot Bravo Bravo, pull up and go around. Go around, Foxtrot Bravo Bravo. Hey, Tower India, Echo Lima, downwind one three, touch and go. India Echo Lima, number three, follow Cessna, left base, turning one mile final. India Echo Lima. Foxtrot Bravo Bravo, Tower, fly runway heading. Fly runway heading, Foxtrot Bravo Bravo. Charlie Zoo, November, clear to land runway one three. Charlie Zoo, November, clear to land one three. Zoo is here, Alpha, change of plans, cross over midfield, join right downwind runway one three.
Test, test, one, two, three. Test, test, one, two, three. Uh, let's hope that's working. Thanks for letting me know. Um, downwind Sim. Oh, man. Good to have you here. Um, my OBS. I had trouble with my audio the other day. I was 80% through a flight and and someone came on the chat and told me that there was no sound and I thought, oh my goodness, what has happened? So it turns out a lot of my uh, setups had vanished after I installed Windows 11, which in itself is okay. But anyway... Yeah, okay. Well, let's uh, let me carry on and see if see what happens. So, I was just explaining that we're here at Stewart Island and in beautiful British Columbia. Uh British Columbia, Canada, and it's about 100 nautical miles north and west of Vancouver International. So, we're going to do a about a 1-hour flight today. It comes down the strait, crosses the channel, crosses over Reed Island. And it comes to, uh, I'm going to, my first landing is at this Reed Island strip that I kind of created. Um, it's a very tricky thing to land on because the, the uh, touchdown zone is about 375 foot elevation. But there's only about 700 feet, maybe 800 feet from the touchdown zone to a whole row of trees back here and if you come in any faster than 50 knots you're in trouble you'll end up in the trees so that's why I like using the Cessna 152 for this and then we're gonna head north over to another little landing strip that I created or didn't create but I've decided to turn it into a landing strip and it is even worse than the first one because what happens with this one is you're coming down between a bank of trees and there's a tiny pond just to the east of the approach and touchdown zone is is about 650 feet and you end up again with a whole bank of trees right in front of you at about Let's see how far in is that. I think it's about 800 feet. Yeah, maybe it's 1,000 feet before you hit the trees. So, in itself, no, they're not real life strips. I actually would like to make it into a strip but I have no idea how to do how to do scenery so I, I used to do scenery when I had P3D but um, uh, this seems way too difficult for me to, to tackle anyway and then we're gonna head north and we're gonna go into what is a real life strip and it's called quantum a quantum river and um, Actually, whoever made this, this whoever put this scenery together, they've got the the runway designations wrong. This is runway zero nine. That should be here. This should be runway twenty seven. But anyway, I know what the difference is. And then we're going to leave there and head further north again into this strip. So this whole flight is a real challenging flight we're going to head into this which this trip here called mo creek airstrip now pro <laughs> the problem with this trip is that it is almost impossible to see as you're coming in all you see is this tiny little dirt plateau right there um the strip itself once you once you get down is, uh, what is it? Just trying to read what it says there. 1,782 feet long. Um, it, the other challenge for this trip is there's a row of trees right in front of the touchdown zone. And you've got to get over those trees and then dive down to get to 
the surface. And then our last uh, airstrip is up here at Omathco River. I mean, this whole area of British Columbia is absolutely gorgeous. It's a beautiful area to uh, fly in. There's a lot of islands. Uh, what flight plan software is this? This is a uh, little nav ma map, actually, downwind sim. This is a little nav map. And the view that I'm using for this is... Um, let me show you here. What is it called? I think it's Google. It's the Google Terrain view. What I like about Little Nav Map is they have, um, for flying in the U.S., you can actually put in U.S. VFR sectionals, which is really nice. Unfortunately, there's there are no sectionals in Canada um, to use, so that are free anyway. So this is where we're going to land. This this airport, this airstrip is fairly, fairly nice to come into. You cross over and um, you're basically doing like a left-hand downwind and then coming in on runway 05. It's also a very secluded spot. So without any further ado, let's get back into our airplane sitting at Stewart Island and give this thing a go. So we're in the Cessna 152 with the mod version from JP Logistics. And uh, let's close up the door. I will leave my door open. And let me go through my checklist. So parking brake is on. The fuel valve down on the floor will turn on. The master battery will turn that on. Panel lights will get them turned on, even though it's a nice sunny day, but I like to have them on. Fantastic. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad that's working. Uh, beacon lights are on, the dome light I like to have on just in case we fly under some heavy clouds, which I don't think we will today. So from a cold start, we need to do a prime. So we'll uh, open full throttles, full mixture, and we'll just hit this primer about three times. Oops, that's the carb heat. That needs to be off. Primer, one, two, three. All right, we're going to pull the throttle back to about a half an inch, a quarter of an inch, so that when it starts, we should be at 1,000 RPM. Pull the mixture back in and turn on the magneto and increase the mixture. There we go. We got a good start. By the way, I use um, Elgato Stream Deck, and I've set up all my checklists. I don't know if you can see that, but I've set up all my checklists on a little Elgato Stream Deck, which I kind of like because it makes it easy to follow. So we've got 1,000 RPM. Over here, um, radios should have been turned off, but I didn't turn them off before starting, but they're okay. We really don't need any DME, but I like to turn it on. We'll turn on altitude reporting at 1200. I checked um, um, there's a VAT sim, and there's no there's neuro traffic control on in the area, so we just won't. Uh, I should have filed a flight plan anyway, but I, I didn't. Um, we'll just fly without a flight plan today. Okie dokie. Alternator definitely should be turned on. Uh, just turn on the ADF again. We're not going to be using it, but I like to have it on and ready to go just in case. 
Transponder is on. I'm just reading my checklist right now. Autopilot is off. We're not using that. Altimeter is set. It's 320, about a 327 foot elevation at this airfield. Nav lights are coming on. Taxi lights, I'm going to turn them on. And um, I'm actually going to do the run up right here just to make sure everything is good. Is good to go. Pull this back a little bit. Okay, so check my checklist 1700 RPM. Seventeen hundred looks pretty good there. Uh, we're gonna check. Uh, I like to check the mixture, make sure it works, and it does. Uh, I'm gonna do the mag check. Right magneto shouldn't be any more than a hundred and twenty-five drop, which it. Oops, which it is. Only about a hundred drop there. We'll put it back to both. And we'll do the left magneto. And it's about the same. We'll put the carb heat on. And we'll do an idle check. And we shouldn't be below 700 RPM. Well, that's okay. We're good there. Back to a thousand. I will put in one notch of flaps. Trim is set where I like it. Radios are okay because we're not using uh, air traffic control today. Edo heat. We won't worry about right now. So let's. Taxi out to the threshold of runway runway two six. We're going to use today. Let's just check the winds here. Uh, let me just look at my winds. Yeah, runway two six. Winds are two hundred at two knots. So that's all good. Okay, park break off. Let's get down to the run at threshold of the runway. Nice to have you on board, Downwind Sim. That's uh, it's an honor to see you. Yeah, I'll send you the uh, flight plan. No problem. You want me to do it later? Like, do it later, I guess? I'm not a pro. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, far from. Far from. Sure, later. Okay, I'll send it later. Right after the flight, I'll send it to you. Okay, so being new to Twitch and and all this sort of stuff, how do I send it to you? Do I... Do I how do I do that? I guess I could put, I guess I could put a link, let me think. Well, I wouldn't say a lifetime, but um, yes, I'm on Discord. So what I could do is join your Discord channel, or you could join mine, either one. No, I, I haven't had a lifetime of flying uh, downwind. I've, um, I used to fly a lot back in my previous life, um, but aviation never got out of my blood. I couldn't get it out of my blood. I had my commercial license. I didn't work as a commercial pilot, but I had my commercial license, and. Um, got to the point where I just couldn't afford it anymore as a hobby, so uh, I had to give it up. Uh, I'm going to turn my strobes on. 
Uh, carb heat should be turned off, which it now is. Okay, so... Okay, we're going to take off here, rotate at about 55 knots. We're going to climb out at approximately 70 knots. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, it is really awesome to do that PPL flight training. It's fantastic. Um, yeah, for sure. Okay, I think we're good to go. Fingers crossed. Seat belts buckled. Let's see what happens. Oh, I should set my heading bug. I like to set it to the runway heading. 260. Okay, airspeed is alive. 40, 45, 50, 55 knots. We can rotate. Right off there to the left is a seaplane base right there. Okay, we're going to head kind of down the channel here. I'm going to retract my flaps. So, do you do you use little nav map downwind, or what's your preferred uh, navigation app? We're going to go up to no more than 2,000 feet today. Oh, yeah, Sky Vector. I, I really love Sky Vector. Um, the only thing I... <laughs> oh, Flight Plan Go. Yeah, I tried that about two years ago, and it was pretty good. Oh, you use it on the iPad. Okay. I don't have a tablet. I don't have I used to have a tablet. But I don't anymore. So have you used little nav map at all? So we're at 1,500 feet. Okay, well, I mean, maybe you don't care for it that much, but I, I, I really like it. But Sky Vector is a wonderful, wonderful app to use. There's no question about that. Um, the only thing I find with Sky Vector, because all of my flying is basically VFR, general aviation. I'm not up. I'm not up at twenty thousand feet, and I'm not in airliners. I'm just going to level off here. Um, and Sky Vector does, of course, have the detail. No question about that on the sectional charts. But I just find little nav map with the um, various maps that you can add to it. I just find they give me better a better view of the ground. You're an X-plane flyer, are you?
Yep, there's the countryside of British Columbia. There's some snow up on that mountain back there. Filled with islands, beautiful islands. Oh, you're VR. Oh, wow. You are a pro. <laughs> I could never tackle that. I tried, I tried the eye tracker thing. And <laughs> I tried the eye tracker and it was good, but it took, took me so long to get, try to get used to it. And sometimes I got, I felt dizzy from moving my head and trying to look up and look down. And I guess I didn't know what I was doing, so I gave it up. Okay, so what we're going to, let me just, what we're going to do is, uh, I'll just use my binoculars and move out a little bit here. Yeah, with VR, you sit inside, I know. I think I'd be scared to try it. So we're going to go down this channel to the right. It's a nice day for flying. I do have, I do have live weather on, so this is what... What you see is what you get. I started at at um, Stewart Island. Uh, Charlie, Yankee, Charlie, Mike, CYCM. Come down to about 1,500 feet. Because our uh, touchdown zone at that no-name airstrip that we're going to first attempt to land on is 375 feet. When we get abreast of this island right here, we're going to turn left and go east across the land. This is all Reed Island that we're looking at here. Great place for fishing and camping and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't want to lose any more altitude. Fifteen hundred feet. So, did you say you um, you're you're primarily X-plane? Is that is that what you said? Okay. Never ever had X-plane. I had FSX and I had P3D, but I never went to X-plane. I I wanted to, but then Microsoft Flight Sim came out. 
and I was hooked on Microsoft Flight Sim only because I, I, uh, I'm strictly a VFR pilot, and I just love scenery. So we're going to head east now, about 110 degrees. And we're going to come over to this. Okay, Dane, don't get too low. We're going to come over to this bay right here. That bit of dirt right up there is where we're going to land. Or try to land. Yeah, I guess once you're once you're good at VR, I guess it's a it's a beautiful experience. Okay, let's head uh, about 160 degrees to the right. Okay, I'm starting to get nervous now. <laughs> ah, boy. Oh, that's good to hear. That's a good feeling when it feels so real. Yeah. Okay, we are going to be landing right on that strip right there. I know I can do the landing. I just quite often end up in the trees. And I don't want that to happen, especially when I've got an audience. <laughs> ah, boy. Okay, let's lose some altitude. Throw in a notch of flaps. We're at 80 knots right now. Where are we? Oh, 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 I've got a tight base here. Ooh, okay, I better lose a lot of altitude. I'm way too high. Okay, yeah, buckle up. Okay, put your drink down because you're going to spill it. Guaranteed. Absolutely guaranteed you're going to spill it. Okay, there we are, straight ahead of us. Okay, 1,000 feet. Okay, let's throw in another notch of flaps. I'm going to throw in all flaps here. I'm going to have to side slip this thing and get it down a little bit further. There we go. 700 feet. 70 knots, way too fast. We'll end up in the trees. 60 knots. 550 feet, 60 knots. 500 feet, 60 knots. There's the upslope right ahead of us. 500 feet, 60 knots. I want to get to about 50 knots. Come on, cut the power. 50 knots. There we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, brakes, 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 brakes. Hold on, baby. Hold on. <laughs> hey, we made it. <laughs> We made it! Woo! We made it! See, I told you to put your drink down. <laughs> Thanks. It's not always well done, but today, right now, it was well done. Thank you. Okay, now, taking off is kind of a breeze because it's downhill. It's like going down a toboggan run. So... Heading 160 is what we want. 
I'll just show you on the map what we did. So we came, left Stewart Island, came down the strait, came across the channel, came across Reed Island, down south into the bay. A very tight base leg. Oh, what's going on? I just got a Microsoft Flight Sim message. Warning. Connection lost. Can you hear me okay? I got a message saying connection lost. Oh, okay. I don't know what that warning was all about. First time I've had that. Anyway, so we made it. So we're going to take off. We're going to head 70 degrees. We're going to head north up to Raza Island. And we're going to go east. And we're going to attempt to come in to this other airstrip that I uh, have found that I'd like to make into an airstrip somehow in Redonda Bay. So there we are. That's the plan. Let's see if we can orchestrate it without having to call 911 for an emergency. Okay. Let me get let me get my nerves back. Where's my flaps? We need 10 degrees of flaps for this takeoff. Temperature pressures are all good. Everything looks good. All right, here we go. Buckle up. Now we go down the hill. Woo, look at this thing go down the hill. Whoa. 50 knots. Okay, rotate. Yes, sirree. We're up. Like I said, it's an easy takeoff. Ooh, cool. Wow. Okay, so there's some trees right to our left. We don't turn left yet. Got to wait a little bit. Retract the flaps. Okay, the flaps are up. Okay, let's turn to about 70 degrees. So we're heading... We're heading for this island here, and we're kind of going to turn north between this island and that island, those two islands. In fact, it's a, it's a, it's a straight due north, 360 degrees. We're going to go up into this straight up here. Fourteen hundred feet. All right, let's head north. Okay, I'll do that after uh, after the flight. I'll I'll post it there. I'll pick up a little bit of airspeed here. 90, get up to about 100 knots. Pick up 
The 152 certainly isn't fast, but but I sure love this bird. Uh, it's what I actually learned to fly. Well, actually, I learned to fly on a 140 way back in my previous life and graduated to a 150 and then graduated to a 152. So I really love this airplane um, for low and slow flying. And I like this particular model because it's it's a it's a mod from JP Logistics, which has vastly improved the the uh, MSFS default 152. So we're going to be heading due east very shortly to that very treacherous airstrip. A little bit worse than the first one we just landed at. It always makes me nervous when I'm <laughs> when I'm heading there. Uh, good thing it's a sim. Can always walk away from it. So let's see my uh Touchdown point is 650 feet. So we can hang in at about 1600 right here. Okay, we're going to head east 90 degrees. All right, so I'm going to point out where we're going to attempt to land. I'll just kind of move up here a little bit. So we're going to come over the little, this little bit of land right here. And it's pretty hard to see, but there's a very tiny pond. And we want to, we want to make our final approach to the west of the pond. And that's going to bring us down right here where that dirt is and between these trees. And then we're going to land. It's uphill. But then the problem comes is that when you get to about this point, it goes downhill. <laughs> so you can't come in too fast. Otherwise, you'll end up in these trees back here. So let's get ready. We're almost there. Lose some altitude here. Put in some flaps. Where am I? There's the pond. Okay, we got to be to the west of the pond. There's the pond right ahead of us. Okay, Dane, you got to get a lot lower than this. I'm going to have to slip this in. I'd slip and lose some altitude. There we go. We're at a thousand feet now. We got to go between those trees right there in front of us. Slow down, slow down. Oh, way too fast, way too fast. This could be an emergency call. This could be an emergency call. Okay, stop, 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 stop. You got to stop, you got to stop, you got to stop. Oh no, we're in trouble. We're in trouble downwind. Aye, 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 we're in trouble. We are in deep trouble. Good thing for slew, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness me. That was not very good at all. I knew I was way too fast. <laughs> yeah, slew to the rescue. You, you got that right. I knew I was way too fast. And I knew I, I, I should have gone around, but oh well, I didn't. Oh, come on. What, what's going on here? Why did the slew do that? All right, let's get back to where I should be. Let's go down a little bit further. Uh, 
Okay, throttle is completely off. There we go. Whew, it's a little better. Ay, ay, ay. That was, that was not the greatest at all. All right, let's get ourselves positioned for takeoff. Get this thing on the road. See how the see how the slope goes down from this point, and that's what gets us in trouble all the time. It always gets me in trouble. I gotta I gotta go back a little bit further because I won't make those trees if I don't. I've tried that before. This is the worst airstrip of all of them. Okay. Hopefully that should do it. All right, let's see where we're at. I'm just going to put my parking brakes on for a moment jump out of the airplane see what's going on here and we can retract those flaps we only need 10 degrees of flaps for this okay uh are you ready? <laughs> Are you ready? That is the question. Are you ready? Uh, the minute we take off, we're going to make a very low left turn to 270 degrees. And we've got to keep the speed about 60 knots just to be safe. So, here we go. Full throttle, release the park brakes, and away we go. We got to go between those trees. We get a little bit of a downhill run right here. 40 knots, little right turn, 50 knots, re rotate, get up above those trees. Yes, sirree, we made it. Lower the nose, pick up some airspeed, get to 60 knots, make a quick left-hand turn before we go into that hillside. 70 knots, we're good. 270 degree heading, we're good. Whew. Wow. We made it. Okay. Okay, we need to turn north. What are we turning to? 340 degrees. Not up that channel, but up a channel here to the right. Over here. Yeah, we're going north this way around this island. This is, this uh, island is that, that one that I referred to before. It's called Raza. R-A-Z-A. And there's little channels all over the place. There's one off to the right. But we're going straight north. The next airstrip that we're going to be landing at is actually a published airstrip. It's, um, although I don't know if I, 
I don't know if it was published in Microsoft or if it was if or if I got it as an add-on. I can't remember. Um, it's called. I'm just looking at the map here. It's called um, Quatam. Q U A T A M. Quatam River. And it's um, C Q R A is the ICAO code. Oh, we don't need to be at 2,000 feet. The elevation of this next airstrip, I think, is about 50 feet. Now, this is a nice little airstrip, actually, we're going to land at. It's, um, like I said, it's only, a, I think it's, what is it? I think it's 50. Yeah, 50 foot elevation. And once you figure out where it is, it's it's actually quite nice to land on. It's also, it's kind of like going, it reminds me of bowling, where the ball is going down the, down the alley. Because you're, you're uh, on the left and right of you, you're just full of trees, so you're just heading down a, a narrow strip. Okay, 1,400 feet, 80 knots, that's good. We're going to be turning, just after we get past this point right here, we're going to be turning right, we're going to go across. This will be our final approach in here. And the strip is right down in here. Right down here. So we're going to go in a heading of 70 degrees. Let's see, where are we? Okay. Seven hundred feet, we can start losing some altitude. The other thing that threw me off on that last landing was I was way too high, way, way, way too high. And I had to side slip and um and and get down and that totally messed up my concentration. So I really should have gone around. Oh, turning too soon. But I didn't. Okay, where are we? There we go. We can turn now. Okay, 70 knots. Looking good. There we are. So it's that it's that strip going straight down the bowling alley there. And right here is like a little clubhouse. And there's a couple airplanes parked there. A nice little strip. Okay, we are at 200 feet. We've got full flaps. Watch out for the trees. Then you got to kind of make a little bit of a left turn right here to go straight down. Throw on the brakes. And all is looking good. The world is still turning. Awesome. Let's see, what are you saying there? Quantum River is available in XP2. Oh, okay. Good deal. So Stewart Island, which is where we started from, and Quantum River, 
Quantum River. The, the, the other two in between are airstrips I just decided to make into airstrips just for the challenge because I do like the challenge. All right, let's take a breath. Parking brake on. Temperature pressure good. Fuel still good. A little less than half a tank. Okay, everything's good. Uh, okay, when we... When we take off, we're going to be heading 320 degrees up the channel. So I'm going to set my heading bug to 320. All righty. Let's go to our fourth stop. And this is the one where it is like almost impossible to see the airstrip but once you once you find the airstrip there's all these tall trees so you've got to come over the trees and then dive down and get in so <laughs> and it is a published airstrip let me give you that let me give you that ICAO code for that before we get going oh hold on Maybe it's not a published air. Well, maybe it is. I don't know. It's called Mo Creek. M O H Creek Airstrip. And it's got a code of BC02. What I'm wondering is it may not be published because BC stands for British Columbia. Maybe Microsoft. Maybe it's a Microsoft created airstrip. I do not know. BC02. Okay, we are ready. Full power, brakes released. Temperatures and pressures are still okay. Keep it straight, Dane. Airspeed is starting to come alive, it's now alive. We've got 35 knots, 40 knots, whoa, 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 50 knots, and we can rotate right at the little clubhouse there. That's where we came from, and this is where we're going. Yeah, that's a nice little airstrip. Let's lose the flaps. Get some airspeed going up here, 80 knots. And we're going to cross over that kind of valley right there over to the next body of water. No drinks were spilled. Cool, that was great. <laughs> we aim to please. We don't always, but we aim to please. <laughs> you know, Downwind Sim, this is only my, I don't know, uh, seventh. I think it's number seven. Maybe it's eight. I'm not sure. Time that I've streamed. Like I said before, I am so new at this. Uh, I don't always know what I'm doing, but I do have fun. Okay, a thousand feet. What's the elevation of the next airstrip? A hundred and... no, sorry. 1,782 feet long. It's 588 foot elevation. 
Okay, so we should get ourselves up to about 1,600 feet. And just kind of hang in there. Well, I'm glad you're able to tune in. You know, if you can't stay for the rest of it, that's fine. I, I understand. This is um, the fourth, number four out of five airstrips, so. Ah, the original Godspeed is on. Whoa, that is so good to see you. Right on. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. So, um, original Godspeed. Just so you know, we're, we're in uh, beautiful British Columbia, which is my area where I live, uh, in Canada on the West Coast. And... Um, we left Stewart Island. We went through a whole bunch of channels. And we uh, landed, attempted to land at a couple airstrips that I, I made into airstrips. And uh, one was okay. The other one wasn't so successful. Uh, but we made it. And now we're going to the second to last airstrip. This particular one, once you find the airstrip, it's at 588 feet. Once you find it, then you got to come over some really tall trees to get down to the airstrip. So that's the challenging part. And I do like a challenge. Okay, we are going to be making a quick right turn up the channel. Oh, looks like we got snow up there. There shouldn't be snow at this time of year. Oh boy, that's not good. That's where we're going to end our flight, is up that way. Right now, we're going to land in here. So we need to go up the channel just a little bit. And then we're going to turn turn to a heading of about 300 degrees. And try to find the airstrip. Okay, let's lose a little bit of altitude. Okay, we're going to turn left now, 300 degrees. We're going to start losing some altitude. Elevation is basically 600 foot elevation. Going to throw in a notch of flaps, two notches of flaps, because we are in the white arc. Now, um, that's not the airstrip, and uh, let me remember now, if I remember, that's not the airstrip either. I think it's to the left of there. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll find out here in a minute. We will find out in a moment. Buckle up your seat belts, put your drinks down, please, because it's going to be... A, f a steep approach. We're at 70 knots. Yeah, okay, that is the airstrip. That is the airstrip. Yeah, brace, brace, brace for impact. Get ready, guys. I've got full flaps. I'm at 60 knots. I'm going to keep it there for a little bit. There's the trees that we have to get 
pass before we descend any further. Okay, here we go. And it's on a, a little dog leg here. Okay, down we go. Down we go. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. There we go. Woohoo! Yay! Woo! There's a truck waiting for us right there. Okay, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Ah. Okay, I'm going to put the parking brakes on for a minute. And we're going to pick up a passenger here. Uh, same passenger that Slant Alpha always picks up. We're going to open the door for her to get in. And open my door just to get a little bit of air for a few minutes. And Freckles should arrive. There's Freckles. Freckles arrives. Welcome aboard, Freckles. We are going to close your door. And we're going to close my door. And we're going to take you to the final destination for the day. So, a quick review. Let's look at that map again. Just zoom out a bit. So, the original Godspeed, this is where we started from. Came down the channel, came across here, came across Reed Island, landed on this airstrip that I turned into an airstrip, took off from there, landed on the next airstrip that I turned into an airstrip, and that's where we had trouble, big trouble. But uh, the airplane survived, and so did we. And then we took off, landed at Quatam River, which is a really nice airstrip. It's a published airstrip. And then we left there, and this is where we are right now, at Mo Creek Airstrip. We're going to take off from here. We're going to head 20 degrees, follow the channel all the way up. We'll try to pick up some speed in this blistering fast Cessna 152 <laughs> and then we're going to come up to the end of the channel and our tip-off point to turn left of course is the, the hills in front of us and the gap between the mountains and we're going to land at Homathco Homathco River Airport this is the Homathco River there's a name right there. So we're going to cross over the airfield, do a left downwind for runway 05, a base, a final, and hope that we make it. But I'm a little concerned that I see snow on the mountains. So I hope that airstrip doesn't blend in to make it impossible to see. But we shall soon find out. Okay, let's get the airplane. Uh, oh, I should have had it above a thousand RPMs. Keep the battery charging. What I like about this this mod from JP Logistics is a lot of things are modeled that the Microsoft 152 isn't. If you drop below a thousand RPM, the warning light comes on and the battery starts discharging. Once you go over a thousand RPM, the light goes out and you can see the ammeter starts heading back up into the charge area. And the circuit breakers all work in this airplane, which is also another nice thing. Enough said, let's get this thing on the road. Okay, guys, seatbelts on. 
Full throttle. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just a second. What did I do with my flaps? Yeah, that's what I thought. I need 10 degrees of flaps, not 30. Okay, park brake released. Full throttle. Away we go. Hundred and twenty degree. Airspeed is alive, forty knots, forty five. And then we got a little dog leg here, we'll just turn and we'll rotate. Sixty knots, we're up, lower the nose, pick up some airspeed, get over the water, and turn to twenty degrees. That's where we came from. We came across that land bridge right there. And now we're heading north. The Saab 340. Wow. S340B. Oh, wow. That's got to be a challenge. I think there's something wrong with Microsoft's live weather here because there should not be snow up on those mountains. There really shouldn't be. Let me look and see what the temperature is. No, see, it's, it's only 20 degrees Celsius, like 70, a little over 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So obviously, there's a problem with Microsoft's live weather right there. That shouldn't be like that. I am going to, just for the heck of it, I'm going to fire up Rex Weather Force and see what it does in comparison to Microsoft. Okay, the first thing I need to do to fire it up is I've got to put this to clear skies. So take the live weather off. Turn it to clear skies. And then activate Rex Weather Force. And it's active. It's going to initiate and it'll inject the weather where we are. It's injecting. Can't see where I'm going, but I think I'm okay. And it's completed. So now let's see what the difference is. Now look at the difference. We still have the same basic cloud patterns, but we don't have any snow. And in fact, It's telling me that it's 73 degrees, 59 degree dew point. Wind is 110 at 8 knots, um, partly cloudy. So Microsoft should not have injected or put snow on those mountains. Okay, we're way too high. We don't need to be at 3,000 feet. Let's pick up some speed. Freckles, how you doing? Are you enjoying the ride? She just likes to look. She looks... She's always looking all over the place. She's... A, She's a friend of Rob at Slant Alpha Adventures. <laughs> uh, that's where we came from. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, Microsoft campus is cold. Yeah, could be. Okay, we're at a blazing speed of 95. We need to go faster than this. Let's get some speed going here. Flaps are fully retracted. Yeah, they are. Temperatures, pressures are okay. We still have less than half a tank of gas. We're good. We're at 100 knots. Let's try to get this bird up to 110. There we go. That's looking better for us. So there's beautiful British Columbia. That's actually what the what the government calls it on the license plate on the back. It says beautiful British Columbia and it really is beautiful. It's a gorgeous area on the west coast, Pacific Northwest. When I, when I took my flying lessons way back in my previous life, I was living in Toronto, Ontario, which I don't know if you guys know where that is, but uh, Forder learned to fly, flies out of Toronto Island, and that's where I took my lessons from, Toronto Island. Um, so Howard and I often talk about those days. And then I, the company I worked for back then, wanted to send me into the U.S. to open up some offices for them, which I did. I was in uh, West Bloomfield, Michigan for three years, then I was in Las Vegas for five years and then uh, Rancho Cucamonga in California just east of LA for three years so I spent 10 years in the US and I absolutely loved it but then we had some health issues and we had to come back home to Canada where where the health coverage is free Yeah, Rancho Cucu. Yeah, right on. Rancho Cucamonga. I don't know how it got that name, but kind of a nice name, actually. I really liked Rancho Cucamonga. It was a nice place. My favorite was Henderson, Nevada, just outside of Las Vegas, where we spent five years. Ah, oh, absolutely loved it. It's fantastic. You've been there, right on. So we're going to go around, take a left around this corner, and then we're going to take a right. And our destination is just up, just up there. Can't see it because of the mountains. So we're at 2,300 feet. That's all good. What did I say the elevation was? Oh, it's only 27 foot elevation. So it's basically sea level. Um, 2,683 foot strip it's kind of a dirt dirt and sand strip it's also another neat little airstrip to fly into and actually even in real life it's a nice little area to to go to and uh, if you like fishing it's fantastic fishing and camping and hiking and all kinds of stuff So anyway, when I left the U.S., came back to Canada because of health issues, um, 
instead of going back to Ontario, which is the mid, the mid, the middle of Canada, we decided to come out to the west coast. So we lived in a little town called White Rock, just south of Vancouver. Yeah, BC is great downwind. It really is, I, and I'm not just saying that, but it it's beautiful. Um, we lived in the Vancouver area for, golly, I don't know, 17, 18, 17 years, I think. And then because all my family is on the island, Vancouver Island, we moved to Victoria, which is the capital. And that's where we are for the past two years. And we're absolutely loving it. Okay, when we take a right around this next bend. Yeah, when we take, I'm just looking at the map here. When we take a right around that next bend, we'll be on, um, on the last leg. How come our airspeed dropped? What are you doing, Dane? You got to keep that airspeed up. Okay, we are definitely getting close. Yeah, that's amazing how Microsoft weather puts snow on all these mountains. I mean, I can see snow on the on the peaks. That's no problem. But down here at this level, there's no way there should be snow. Okay, 3,000 feet. Let's let's get ourselves down. But I'm going to keep the speed up. 110 knots. Yeah, we don't want to go too far into the yellow. Another tip off for when we need to turn is there's always a guy out fishing right in the middle of the water out there. You'll see him as we get closer. You okay, Freckles? I think she's okay. But I don't see her seatbelt on. Huh. That's not so good. I guess she likes to live dangerously. Yeah, so when I was saying earlier, I um, I finished my flight training in the C1, uh, Cessna 152 and actually got my commercial license using the Cessna 152. And I just, I just absolutely love this airplane. He trusts, yeah. Right on. <laughs> Okay, I'm glad she has trust in me. <laughs> so I got my commercial license in the 152, and then I flew 172s. And that, that was it, really. I just did it for pleasure. I didn't work as a, as a commercial pilot. I could have got a job actually way up north, northern Ontario, flying bush, a bush flight. But I, I didn't... I should have done it, but I didn't really want to do it. It was too far north, and I... I didn't feel like it. Okay. I don't see our buddy fishing today. Well, that's strange. He's always there. Maybe he's around the corner.
Okay, this is going to be our last stop. Some good hiking trails right there. If you're into that, which I'm not, our son is, but I I never did never did have an interest. There's our buddy out fishing right there. I knew he'd be out there to greet us. Okay, we really can lose some altitude now. So, let me see. What's our approach here? We're coming in at 300 degrees. We're going to fly over the airfield and make a left downwind for runway 05. I'm going to put carb heat on. And I'm going to put the pedo heat on just in case. Okay, 300 degrees. Let's dial it in on the heading bug. That's where we're going. Yeah, yeah, it's probably Melvin. <laughs> yeah, it probably is. So that's the Homalth. I can never pronounce the name of that river. The Homathko. H O M A T H K O. Homathko River and the Homathko airstrip is right along the river, right along the that portion of the river right there. You can't see it right now. And the camping area and aircraft are parked down in this little niche down in here. Okay, let's turn to 300 degrees. Get ourselves down to 1,000 feet. What are we? We're 100 knots. Oh, we'll just stay at that just for a few minutes. A little more overcast up there. Looks like there's some moisture in those clouds. One problem with British Columbia is in the wintertime, we get rain, 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 rain. It never stops raining. We don't get snow, at least not where I live, we don't get snow. But we sure get a lot of rain, but it keeps everything nice and green. Okay, let's get the speed into the white arc. Throw in one notch of flaps. It's still hard to actually see the airstrip because it's also nestled between trees. Everything in British Columbia is trees, trees, trees everywhere. Okay, we're we'll keeping it about 80 knots. I'm just going to veer off to the right a little bit. So... There's the airstrip running there in between the trees. So we are going to turn downwind now. There's the airstrip down there. We are at uh, 800 feet. That's okay. 
We're okay. 70 knots. Sixty knots. It's gonna put in another notch of flaps. I'm I'm on a tight I'm on a tight downwind. I should I should widen it out a little bit. Too close to make that base turn to final. Where are we? Can't see the airstrip. That's okay. We'll just make a left turn here to base and just keep bringing it around. Seventy knots. Okay, where's that airstrip? There it is there. I always get myself high. I don't know why I do that. And then I end up having to side slip down and then I get myself all flustered because I side slipped. Okay, let's straighten things up now. Full flaps between the trees. Buckle up, buckle up, buckle up, put your drinks down. See, it's kind of a sandy a sandy dirt strip. Whew, we made it. Yeah, I, I really need to start keeping my altitude a little lower. Yeah, hold well, on, Freckles. Yeah, I forgot to tell her that. Now, what I like about this airstrip is if I was to go straight ahead and to go to the right, it would take me to the river. I'll just pop up there for a second. The river is, well, you can't really see it, but it's just over there. But where you park your airplane is kind of neat. Come down into this grass down here. I think Melvin Leroy would like this airstrip. And Flockstrot would like to probably put a hangar in here, I bet you. Come down here into this nice little area. And in real life, there are some cabins off to the right behind the trees. A lot of covered areas for working on airplanes. There's the cabins down there. Where am I going to park? I'm just going to park in front of one of these work areas because I probably should clean up the airplane after you guys go home. I'm just going to park right in front of this workshop right here. Okay, hold it right there. There we go. We made it. So when you were flying patterns, you'd start the descent at 45 degrees. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree with you. Um, that That is what you're supposed to do. Uh, but I didn't do it today. All right, let's go through my checklist shutdown. Where am I? Uh... Okay, throttle. Mixture. Parking brake on. Avionics should be turned off. Mixture full lean. Starve the engine of fuel. Throttle to idle. Magneto's off. Alternator off. Beacon light off. Taxi lights off. Nav lights off. Fuel valve down on the floor. Uh, down there. 
don't know if you can see it. There it is down there. Fill valve closed, panel lights off, and the master battery off. And we were 53 minutes on this flight today. And we're going to let... Uh, we're going to let Freckles out. Out you go, Freckles. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Oh, I forgot to retract the flaps. Ooh, okay, let's put the master battery back on. Retract the flaps. That's better. Thanks, Downwind. I'm, I'm glad you stopped in. I really appreciate it. Um... I guess I guess it would make a a good bush league backcountry flight. I, I I never thought of that, but uh, how do I go about doing that? <laughs> I'm too new at all this stuff. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, appreciate you guys stopping in. And um, with that, I'm going to say goodbye for now and hopefully catch you on the next stream. See you around. Fox drop, Bravo, Bravo, pull up and go around. Go around, Fox drop, Bravo, Bravo. Tower India Echo Lima, downwind 13, touch and go. India Echo Lima, number 3, follow Cessna, left base, turning one mile final. India Echo Lima. Box drop, Bravo, Bravo, Tower, fly runway heading. Fly runway heading, box drop, Bravo, Bravo. Charlie Zulu, November, clear to land, runway 13. Charlie Zulu, November, clear to land, 13. Zulu, Sierra Alpha, change of plans, cross over midfield, join right downwind, runway 13. Zulu, Sierra Alpha, cross over midfield, join the right downwind.